everybody, this is Brandon Central Arkansas. We're going to do another grow. This time, endive. Hope I'm pronouncing that properly. Endive green curled ruffled is what I assume it's supposed to be. Um, this is from True Leaf Market, otherwise known as Mountain Valley Seed there. I'm an affiliate of theirs and I really like their seed and that's why I'm an affiliate of theirs. It's very consistent and very reasonably priced. So. I've got 35 grams of endive. I put it on that little uh, medical tape here so I could transfer it to the 1020 tray and that way I'll know exactly what it is. The first thing I did was I sprayed it with the antifungal. Now I'm going to spread the seed and hit it again with the antifungal to start the germination process. There it is. Uh, it looks like it seeded pretty heavily but um, I didn't know how heavily to seed it and as you know in IHG intense hydroponic grows um, I can grow denser than a lot of people that grow in soil and so I don't know if this is going to be too much or I can make it I can manage to do it we will see uh, for now I need to get it on the rack and get it put up in the rest of the assembly and get it started growing Alright, got it sitting in its spot. I've got my black stackable cover on here. Everything's looking good. Now all I have to do is put the dome on it. And we are done for this. And there you go. I'll bring you back as we grow. Take a look at the endive today. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah, I'm going to hit it with the antifungal and put the cover back on for at least one more day. One of the things I don't show very often, which is important, is you see these little seed holes? Those are the holes that come off of the little microgreen plants and they stick to the cover here and all I do when I take the cover off is just wipe them off. I use a piece of foam board that has a straight edge and it just slips right off. I just push it right off and then put the dome back on. It takes all of about five seconds. Something's going on with the end eye. The cover's tilted. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's moved it over. Whoa, look at all the seed holes on that thing too. Well, it is time to uh, take the cover off for sure. I'm going to leave the blackout dome on it. And I'm not going to spray it with antifungal this time. But we'll just leave the blackout dome on it for another day or two. Let them get just a little bit longer and then we'll put the light to it. Look at the endive today. Oh, gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. It's taller than the tray now. We're going to throw the light to it. Get that going. Let there be light. <laughs> Very nice grow. Look at that endive. How cool is endive? Who'd ever thought? <laughs> you never see anybody growing in dive, or I haven't. This is really cool. In dive is looking perfect. I might have could have left the dome on a little longer for him to get a little leggier, but I mean, this thing is a wonderful grow. It's getting some nice color to it now too. The endive just is not getting tall at all. I mean, but it is even more than arugula. It's just like flat carpet. Very bouncy. Very dense. I need to harvest that in the next day or so for sure. 
because it's not getting any taller and we have really good cotyledon growth so it's just a short microgreen haven't been able to get to the end dive for lots of reasons and the first true leaf is starting to show which won't hurt with end dive but it's such a carpet I really should have harvested by now Hey everybody, we're going to do the harvest inside the house. The endive microgreens are ready. And the reason why we're doing it in the house is because they're actually a little past ready. And it's been raining outside non-stop for a while now. So those limitations have uh, um, set me forth to beg my wife to be able to do this inside. Because that's not something that normally happens. So I've got my little RV table set up right now. I've got my microgreens here. These are endive. You know that because you've been watching the video. But for me, this is uh, often days in between. This is what it looks like. And the roots. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to do a typical scissors harvest. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the screen and lay it on the table here. going to put the cuttings and uh, anything left over in here and I'm going to put the microgreens in the tray there so that you can get a weight on them. So this is the carpet, a lovely lovely carpet. An endive does not grow very tall. Whew, gotta get those little bitty extra ones out. Wife's gonna get me. <laughs> oh. So it doesn't grow very tall, so um, I'm going to have to, I can't cut it like I do with the electric knife, which is my preference. So I'm going to have to cut them with the scissors here. There's nothing really um, special about them that, as far as harvesting goes, other than it's going to take a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and speed you up here so you don't have to sit here and watch me do this in real time, which is going to take a little while. Here we go. All right, here we go. These are the microgreens. I'm gonna go ahead and do a taste test for you right here in front of you. Well, uh, to me, it's very bland, like lettuce. <laughs> it tastes like a lettuce to me. All right, here's the screen. I want to demonstrate how easy it is to get this stuff off. Now, this is the small screen, so it's going to have the smallest of holes, so therefore it should be the most difficult, right? And that's how you do it. Now I'm going to show you a tool. I normally do this outside so I don't make a mess. I just use the tips of my fingers. I may get a little bit of nail in there. These screens are pretty durable unless you just really stretch it. When I'm outside I don't have to be as careful about not getting them everywhere. So, once you remove the stem side, the root side comes off real easy. Make sure you're in the camera there and can see it. Okay, that's it. Now, let me do a quick rinse with my fingers, and I'll show you what tool I'm talking about. All right, we'll pick up where we left off over here by the sink. 
I really I do this outside so I don't cause a mess. But we're being right by the sink here. I thought I could show you. But yeah, just do that with your fingers and flip it over. You see it moves the roots. And then when you've got this much done, you can take this tool. Now this is a paint um, lot, it keeps the line like if you're gonna paint something. Like you put it up against the line, you paint here, that way you get it on here, but not here. So that's the purpose of this tool. But you take this tool, you can take and scrape it. It's best if you don't have anything underneath it to catch. You just take this tool. Scrape it, you get almost everything off of it. I'm just going to do one half for you and then I'll do the other later. But then, you just you can see most of it's gone right there. And then, you just all you need is a little nylon scrubber and it just scrubs right off, and the screen isn't damaged. It's hardier than you think it is, and um, it can be reused over and over and over. I've been using the same three or four screens for, I don't know, six months now or better, and they still look awesome. If they get a little bit of stain, if you just, um, the washing is normally all it takes, but if you want, you can soak it in a little bit of mild bleach solution that comes right back off. So I just thought I'd share that uh, cleaning and um, how to get stuff out of the screens and how easy it is and stuff, and that it's constantly reusable. All right, let's do my typical way in. Turn it on. I'm going to put a glass on here and an empty tray that matches the one with the microgreens in it. And the whole purpose of the glass is to elevate it so you can still see the screen here and um, have the microgreens not cover up the tray, not cover up the screen. I mean, okay, so now we're going to zero it out. Tear it out, so it's called T A R E. Try this again, dummy. <laughs> okay, 0.59, same thing. So 0.59 pounds, 268 grams. That equates to nine and a half, nine point four five ounces. That's pretty good uh, for a salad type microgreen. So I'm gonna bring you in close here. I don't mind if you subtract a little bit of the weight because they're Maybe a little bit damp, but I want to bring you in close here to look at the microgreens more up close. Whoop. Get just a general look of what they look like. It's a pretty cool microgreen, it really is. This is Brent, you guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you later.